Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the channel today. I'm going to show you how to register a business in Canada. So without further ado, let us get into it. The first thing you want to do is jump into this website over here. This is Ontario.ca and I'm going to leave this link in the description below. You can jump straight into there and get right over here instead of navigating through the website. Now, once you're on this page, okay, what you want to do is you want to scroll down and you will eventually find where it says corporation partnerships, non-profit cooperatives, and then sole proprietorships. Now, depending on what kind of business you would like to register in Canada, you can go ahead and use the registration form accordingly. But for example purposes today, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use this sole proprietorship. Now, just underneath that, it says register a business name for a sole proprietorship. Now, we're going to click on this and what it will do is it will open up this um, service account. And here you can read through this. Now, if you have previously logged in, you can go ahead and use this link up over here to log in. But what I'm going to do is right over here, it says create or sign into your Ontario account. Now, once you get into this, right, you will have to have um, an account existing already. And here you are going to start filling out the details that you are going to need to register your business. So the first thing you want to do is enter your title and your first name and then your middle name, if you have a middle name, and then your last name. You want to then go ahead and enter the contact details over here. So you can enter in your email address. You can now confirm your email address and then you need to enter your telephone number. So that's the country or the area code and then your number and an extension if there is additional digits on your telephone number. You can now also enter your fax number, your cellular number, and then they want a physical address. Now this can be either your home address if you do not yet have a business address, or if you're running an online business and you don't actually have a physical business address. So what you can do is you can say Canadian address and what it'll do is it'll find the address using the postal code. So all you have to do is go ahead and enter in that postal code over here. But now I'm going to just use that international address and I'm going to use this address over here. And once you're done, you're going to go ahead and you're going to enter in the country of the address and then you want to check this box over here. It says mailing address is the same as your physical address. OK, and then at the bottom, uh, you're going to tap on create. Just make sure that everything with the asterisk, the red asterisk, all of that information is filled in because this is required information. The next step involves just accepting their terms and conditions. And right over here, we get to enter some contact information again. So as you can see over here, we're going to require the first name, middle name, last name, your contact details, as well as then your email address. So let's just go ahead and enter all of this information in over here. And we're going to go ahead and say continue. Now from here, you're going to go ahead and enter your proposed business name. So let us go ahead and we're going to just say how to harbor. And you can now also go ahead and you can check this name. So once you tap on the check name, you can see that it'll give you um, some feedback. And so it says the system will check for some rules, but it is the entity's responsibility to ensure the name complies with all the rules and the acts and, and regulations. So all you need to do is make sure that you are reading the act and regulations and then you'll find out if the name is subject to its terms and its conditions. So your primary activity. Now, if you're unfamiliar with any of these terms, there is a question mark icon. You can just go ahead and tap on this and it'll give you that information. So this is the primary activity um, of your business or your corporation. So all you need to do is go ahead and start typing. So let's just say um, education, for example. Now, as you can see, it comes up with some codes and you will have to choose the appropriate um, primary activity. So let us just go, for example, with this one. And then again, we're going to confirm our contact details and we're going to just say save and continue. So if you do have an address, you can go ahead and say yes, or you can go ahead, you can say no. And then as you can see over here, it says principal place of business, and you're going to have to enter that physical address in again. 
on step three, you're going to go ahead and enter your full name again, as well as the addresses. So as you can see over here, we're going to just say the same address as the uh, principal place of business. And we can just say save and continue. Step four involves choosing authorization. So over here, it says person acting under power of attorney. This is now if you're doing it on behalf of a company or on behalf of somebody else. However, if we're going to choose sole proprietor, that means it's us. And as you can see, here, it says full name and it'll be your name right over there. You're going to go and tap on save and continue. And on the next page over here, you can see you can review all of your information, such as your business name, your address, um, the ownership authorization. And then you can actually go ahead and tap generate PDF and it'll take all this information and generate a PDF for you, which you can have on your device. You can print out or whatever else you need. So over here, you can also then just go ahead and check this box over here. It says, I confirm the accuracy of the information submitted. And then over here, it says right at the bottom, this application is complete and can be submitted. Now, what you want to do is go ahead and tap on the submit button and it'll be going through the process of being approved or declined. And that should take um, a few days, depending on how busy that department is at the time. Now, if you have any questions, you can leave it in the comment section. We'd love to answer them. And we'll see you next time. Cheers for now.